Good morning, everyone. I'm Rafe Pomerantz. I'm chair of a network called Arctic 21. Uh, just to take a minute to tell you about Arctic 21, we are a network of uh, non-governmental organizations, scientists, research institutions, and others. We were established to support a decision by the U.S. government to make climate change in the Arctic a focus of the U.S. chairmanship. The uh, U.S. State Department at the time, who of course still is, the, the Secretary of State, John Kerry's, uh, very concerned about the climate problem. Uh, we had an opportunity as chair to set an agenda. And the third, uh, or the other third reason is a part of our mission, really, is that the Arctic is unraveling. So this was a moment for the United States to shine a much more light on the climate change issue in the Arctic. We have really two functions uh, now. One is to continue to communicate what we call the unraveling of the Arctic. And unraveling, I underline that, it's a critical word. There's a big difference between the word change and the word unraveling. Well, it's something you could think about for yourselves. The, uh, the, uh, in the unraveling, we point to five elements. You've heard about all of them at one time or another uh, today or over the conference, but I'll, I'll just they are the loss of, of Greenland, the, the loss of sea ice, the shrinkage of northern hemisphere snow cover, uh, the thawing of permafrost, and the loss, this, this is just one uh, chart or, or graph of what's going on with the non-Greenland glaciers in the Arctic. And you can see how steeply the retreat is. And what's important about this one is that the we talk about sea level rise mostly in the context of Greenland, but the Arctic glaciers, particularly those, as the Secretary General mentioned yesterday, in Alaska and Canada are sufficiently large in volume to be major contributors to sea level rise, particularly in the early decades of the 21st century. So if you look, you look across the Arctic, you see the unraveling no matter which system you look at. Our second... Uh, purpose, particularly in the second year of the U.S. chairmanship, is to take that context and basically we think a new framework for the Arctic has to be established, a new policy framework, because we don't really have one. It's sort of, it, the, we don't have sort of an end game in mind for the Arctic, and that needs to be established. So we think, we, we use a question to raise this issue, and it's, it's implicit in this panel, which is, what is the Arctic we have to have? Uh, and uh, as you can see and you've heard, the Arctic uh, supports at least three major components of the Earth's climate system. Carbon storage, that is, as Sue said, the, the maintenance of, the, of uh, carbon in permafrost. Reflectivity in sea ice and snow cover which are major feedbacks, uh, uh, warming feedbacks to the uh, overall global system. So as the Earth loses its reflectivity, it leads to the Arctic amplification. And third is ice storage. Now, ice storage is a huge function in the Arctic because Greenland, as Bill uh, and Phil have alluded to, has multiple meters of potential sea level rise. And as I mentioned, the non-Greenland glaciers also are going to be, are be, are already a contributor to global sea level rise. So the question, the idea is, okay, the Arctic uh, supports, is critical to three components of the global system. What's the goal? How do we sustain those three components? And policymakers need to establish a future state that maximizes the chances for maintaining those pillars of the Earth's climate system. And that is a goal that's really not on the international agenda. It's to some extent implicit in the goals of 1.5 and 2 degrees. But those are not tied to the specific pillars. And what we really need to do is join the kind of general goals of the framework convention to the specific elements of the, the Arctic system and develop a new policy framework of what's required to keep the system intact. So th this leads, of course, to three, a number of questions. As I mentioned, what is the Arctic we have to have? And the key policy question is, 
what is the future state of the Arctic? And unless that's decided today, there'll be no chance, no chance if you wait a few decades to then ask the question later to keep the system intact. And in doing so, in, in th thinking about the future state, we have to determine how to get there once we've established the number, how much forcing can we tolerate, how and when can we achieve that future? Now, uh, of course, there are, <laughs> this is, we're in a completely um, unprecedented context. This is not easy. It's a, an enormous, enormous global task to achieve these ends, both for the Arctic and the rest of the world. So there's nothing small about this. Uh, here I've just mentioned four general areas of policy that we need to, that are components of getting or possible components to getting to this end. One of course is which has been talked a great deal about and is underway with all the new technologies in the world is decarbonization of the world's energy system. It's fundamental, cannot stabilize uh, carbon dioxide over the long run without doing this. Uh, number two, Short-lived forcers, generally that refers to methane and black carbon because of their short lifetimes in the atmosphere. If we control them, we get a rapid reduction in the rate of uh, temperature increase in the Arctic. That's why the Arctic Council several years ago established a task force on short-lived forcers. Uh, the idea was how can we lower the rate of warming? Uh, it, it, it's, they can make a significant contri contribution Methane, of course, has to be done on a worldwide basis. Black carbon has a much more localized impact on the whole. Carbon removal, several mechanisms for doing that. Land use overall, forests, wetlands, agriculture. There's a whole biological route to uh, carbon removal. Then there's the thought that, or the analysis, the potential technology for mechanically removing carbon uh, from the atmosphere. At the moment, it's very expensive, but it, perhaps it's a symbol of the fact that the amount of R&D going into solutions of this problem compared to the risks is uh, infinitesimal. We need to be putting billions and billions of dollars into the R&D to develop the technologies that are required to lower the massive risk. Finally, I'll mention uh, solar radiation management and other radiation management options. That, these are interventions. Kind of like the uh, simplest way to think about it is Mount Pinatubo, the famed volcano not that long ago when, when the volcano went off, it generated huge amount, uh, uh, an enormous amount of sulfur in the stratosphere, which for about three years cooled the planet off. And the idea is uh, if, the, uh, if governments decided to use such a technology, you could get immediate cooling of the planet. But there's no serious research program, certainly in the U.S. government right now, there are some around the world, but it, it, it's a growing part of the conversation. So finally, what's the next moment in all of this? And actually, it's a pretty interesting uh, moment because the Arctic Council will meet in its final ministerial of the U.S. chairmanship in Fairbanks next May. And normally, these meetings of foreign ministers are complete sleepers. Uh, they, nobody pays attention, really. Uh, but I will say that Al Gore went to one. I remember Hillary Clinton went to one. She knows the Arctic. Uh, she's been up there several times. Um, but they, they don't generate a whole lot of media. But this year may be different because as we approach that meeting, a major assessment, kind of like the IPCC, for the Arctic will be completed. It's going to be done this year. It's called Snow Water Ice Permafrost in the Arctic. And as an up-to-date scientific assessment of the trends, it will have a summary. The scientific body will put a policymaker summary on top of it, and all that will flow into this ministerial meeting. Well, the question, will it be a sleeper, or will, will the ministers be awake? So what is our job, all of us? Wake up. This is a fundamental moment in the history of the Arctic, that Fairbanks ministerial, because either we establish, we determine what the future we have to have is, we have wasted another major opportunity to galvanize the world behind the future of the Arctic and the planet. Thank you.